CataractCoach.com, I will scaffold for a Morgagnian cataract. Inserting the eye will first can protect the capsule during FACO. Interesting case, you can see definitely, it looks like a dislocated lens, but it's actually a Morgagnian lens. That's the endonucleus. All the epinucleus, all the cortex has been resorbed. It became liquefied and then it became absorbed and gone. That's why I have a big empty capsule bag with just that basically endonucleus inside of it. So getting a rexus done, which can be a little tricky here because you don't have that support. But it looks like a nice rexus has been completed here, albeit a little bit on the small side for my taste. And now here comes more viscoelastic. You can fill up the bag too with the viscoelastic. There we go. And now the question is, what are you going to do to remove the nucleus here? Well, it should be your standard phaco, but remember, nothing is weighing down the capsule bag. There's no cortex, there's no epinucleus, nothing to hold down the capsule bag. Oh, a CTR going in. As you know, I'm watching the video for the first time with you. It's more fun that way. So here comes the CTR being placed just manually using some forceps, and that can help strengthen the bag. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of zonal laxity there, but I suppose it couldn't hurt to put the CTR in. Not sure it's absolutely necessary. So I prefer to put a CTR in with the injector system and then catching the leading eyelet with the Sinsky hook. But certainly you can dial it in this way. This is just manually with forceps. Just make sure you really have the caps or bag nicely filled so there's space for it to go around. There it is. And it looks like it's going around nicely. Again, two-handed technique may be helpful too. So I'd try two hands. But let's get this dialed into the bag. There you go. There's the Sinsky hook in the trailing eyelet. And get that dialed in the bag and let it go. Beautifully, beautifully done. So now here's the nucleus. What are you going to do here? You can use that Sinsky to lift it up. There we go. And now creating a gap there. And then we're going to insert the eye well underneath that gap. So I would have had a little bit of a bigger rexus, and that'd bring the whole nucleus just out of the bag. But here it's just tilted up to make a gap there. Here comes the eye well being placed. And so nice and easy. Get that delivered to make sure it goes underneath the cataract. Oh, almost. So maybe a two-handed technique here will help. That's a good idea. I like that idea. So injector in one hand, and then the other hand, get that delivered. There it is. Get that lens in the bag. 7L, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like the lens is in the correct orientation. That's good. Get that trailing haptic in the bag. I'd bring that nucleus up a little bit more, too. See, it's kind of trapped there. And we'll see at the end of the case the size of the Rexus. But to me, it looks like, if I was going to guess, four and a half-ish. Maybe even a little smaller. So now that you get that lens, get it, that one arm rotated, get it in the bag, and now you can use your phaco probe and just quickly make short work of that nucleus. Not sure if that trailing haptic's fully in the bag, but let's see. Here's where I would like a, a sharp chopper, a little easier to get in there, but you can chop with this one. Hey, did I tell you about cataractcoach.com, our absolutely amazing podcast, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology? If you listen, I promise you'll learn so much. The sole purpose is to make you a better surgeon. Plus, remember, the cataractcoach.com website has so much more great material, much better than YouTube. Before you email me with a question, look on cataractcoach.com first. Thank you. Now, again, trying to buzz in there and chop this thing up. Yeah, there we go. Get a few good chops in here and emulsify that out. And now, of course, that eye wall that's in, optic that's in the bag is protecting the bag. And you don't have to worry about the posterior capsule coming up. And so, again, I would have liked a nice chop. There we go. So sometimes this lens can have a little bit extra density. It doesn't look too bad here. And then emulsify these pieces. They'll come out pretty easily. Another chop, maybe. Or just you wolf it down with a little bit more uh, phaco power. And then let's see where that lens is. That lens looks like it's pretty good, protecting the capsule for sure. I'll just ensure that the, when you get the cataract out, ensure that it's completely within the capsule bag. Make sure that trailing haptic's in there, too. And then, of course, together, we'll judge the size of the rexus. Um, assuming this is a, a lens with a 6 millimeter optic, which is pretty much our industry standard. So here come the last few pieces. A little bit of chamber balance. I'd probably increase your infusion pressure or decrease your aspiration flow rate there to get a little more AC stability. But I like the slow motion technique here. Just taking your time to remove that cataract. It looks pretty good here. So great job for anonymous surgeon here. And so here we go. Look, let's take a look. Is that lens in good position? It looks pretty reasonable. Mm, let's see where's our rexus. Did I misjudge it? Let's see what size that rectus is. Here's the IA probe. Not sure there's a lot of cortex remaining. But yeah, there's that half rate. I just want to make sure that one's in the bag. But let's look here. It looks okay. Maybe, where is the rexus? I don't quite see the reflex of the rexus. 
Hopefully the Rex is as good. I just can't quite tell with the video. You can see from these black sidebars on the side of the video that this was a different resolution video that we had to crop a little bit and therefore resolution suffered a little. And then here you go. End of the case. Looks pretty good. Hey, remember, check out that podcast. I promise you'll learn so much. And leave a comment below. What do you think happened to that Rexus?